Hello, today we're going to take a look at an event that has captivated the world ever since it happened all the way back in 1912, and that was the maiden voyage of the RMS Titanic. So we're going to start off looking at uh, the dock in Southampton, England, where the Titanic started taking passengers and crew on board and uh, you'll notice if we open this up that this dock was built specifically to hold the Titanic and its sister ships which were some of the largest ships in the world now while we're looking at this picture I'd just like you to notice kind of the environment the the way the people are dressed you have you know some nice looking officers and gentlemen and how big the ship looks now compared to ships today this obviously isn't a huge ship but back then it was I believe the largest ship um, that had been created and so if we actually open up this article which I'll have you read on your own later it gives you a little bit more information about this specific berth where the Titanic was docked and it was berth 44 and it looks like it doesn't want to load up right now but like I said you'll, you're, you're going to take a look at that later you'll also see here we have another picture of the Titanic it's just a little bit wider so you can see some of these other boats and things. Now, in Southampton, this is where a lot of the crew boarded the Titanic. And so if we go on over to this pub, this um, pub is an example of where some of the crew members would have spent their time before they boarded the Titanic. Now, I don't know if you noticed, this pub is just a little ways away from the dock. Here's the dock right here. And so this pub is one of the closer ones to this specific dock. And if we open this up, maybe. Now, not all the passengers boarded the Titanic in Southampton. Later, you'll see that some of them board um, in France and Ireland. But it's kind of interesting I'll have you watch this video in just a second, but the Slade brothers were supposed to be crewmen on board the Titanic, and they were inside this pub, and let's just say they weren't paying attention to the time, and they left the pub too late, and so the Titanic sailed without them. So uh, you probably guess that at that point they were very sad and upset that they missed the boat but afterwards they were very grateful that they had missed it because they were still alive um, and so then we watch this video right here now you also notice I just want you to be able to see the front of this pub I'm not sure if this is the same as how it looked back then but this is what it looks like right now so just kind of kind of old looking, just little, little and small. But if we come back out of Street View, come back. So the Titanic left and actually almost ran into another ship as it was leaving, which is kind of scary. But they left down this channel, traveled along this little white path you see here. Now, they obviously did not make that sharp of a turn, but that's just how the line drew it when I drew it. So they traveled along here to their next port, going and going and going and going. Let's zoom out a bit. You can see here they are down here in France. They picked up some more crew members. Obviously, they also didn't travel across land. That's just the way the line drew. Then they hopped on over here to Ireland. And then after that, that is when they set sail. Now, the Titanic was headed to New York. And it had about 2,000 
passengers on board, which you would think would be a lot, but they weren't even at 75% capacity. They, this was their maiden voyage, and so they hadn't completely filled up. But you'll see, if we zoom out here, this is the basic route that they were taking over here from England across, and then they were supposed to be heading over here right here. Well, partway through their journey, they started receiving ice warnings that looked like this. You'll notice like this one, Captain Smith, who this is the captain of the Titanic. Uh, they were reporting icebergs in an area where the Titanic was headed towards. Now, back then, their, the way they got messages was through Morse code and so they had officers who would take the Morse code and get it here into normal English and then would deliver the messages up to the captain and up to the bridge of the ship but a lot of the messages weren't taken very seriously or just weren't the warnings weren't heeded and so the Titanic continued on now it left Southampton on April 10th. Yeah, April 10th. And then it was right here where the lookouts spotted an iceberg. Now, the iceberg was directly ahead of the Titanic. And you'll notice as we watch this video, and this information here, the lookout saw the iceberg when it was less than 500 feet away. Well, it took 850 feet for the Titanic to stop at the speed it was traveling, and at that point it was traveling fairly fairly quickly. And so the lookouts let the bridge know what was going on, and the officers on the bridge, they tried as hard as they could to not crash directly in the iceberg. They tried to turn, and so instead of hitting the iceberg from the front, the iceberg scraped along the side. Now, here we can watch this video about these lookouts because there are some people who wonder, should the lookouts have seen the iceberg sooner? You know, what, what was going on? They didn't have binoculars, so would that have helped? So, in a minute, we'll take a look at this video right here. Now, you'll notice we have a bunch of other things here. We have some information about crew members, um, passengers. We have all these little pictures of the wreckage of the Titanic, which I'll give you time later that you can go searching through all of these. Now, there are just a couple that I'd like us to take a look at. You'll notice here we have the Titanic by the numbers, and it gives us a little bit of information about the Titanic. You'll notice that this is the distance that they sailed in here. But you'll notice here, so they had 30 seconds between the sighting of the iceberg. They hit it at 11.40 p.m. on April 14th. Then 60 minutes passed before they launched the first lifeboat. And then the ship sank at 2.20 a.m. on the 15th. They received a lot of warnings, but the problem, one of the biggest problems the Titanic had was the number of lifeboats. There was only 20 lifeboats, and so there weren't enough for all of the passengers on board. However, you'll notice here, they had more lifeboats on board than were required by law, because at that point in time, there wasn't any law requiring lifeboats. But... Only 700 people made it onto a lifeboat. Most of those people were first class passengers. The passengers were split into first, second, and third class. And so you'll notice when we come down here that we, and it's split up by first class, second class, third class. The odds of a woman or child in first class surviving was very high, but as you went down, there was less of a chance that, that the people would survive. Now we're going to have to make another video so that you can get the rest of this virtual field trip. So take a look for the part two video.